along with uh, Senator uh, Joe Manchin and actually a total of 60 sponsors, I've filed uh, S-1, which is a Keystone approval bill. A very simple, straightforward bill. This is legislation that we've seen before in this body. What it does is under the Commerce Clause of the Constitution, authorizes Congress to approve the Keystone XL pipeline project. Got this chart here to show you the project. It runs from Hardisty in Alberta, Canada, all the way down to uh, our refineries in Texas along the Gulf Coast. This project will move 830,000 barrels of oil a day. Some of that will be oil from Canada. Some of that will be domestic oil from the Bakken region in Montana and North Dakota. This is part of building the infrastructure so that we can build a comprehensive energy plan for our country. We're producing more and more oil and gas in our country from the shale place, from places like the Bakken in North Dakota and Montana, the Eagleford in Texas, from natural gas from places like the Barnett and the Marcellus in New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio. And what we're working towards is, some people refer to it as energy independence, but really energy security for our country. Energy security for our country, what does that mean? That means we produce more energy than we consume. Obviously, energy is a global market. The market for energy is a global market. We know that. The market for oil and gas, global market. But the point is, working together with our closest friend and ally, Canada, we can have North American energy security where we produce more energy than we consume. Why is that important? That's important because it's about creating jobs. It's important because it's about economic growth. It's important because it's a national security issue. Why do we continue to rely on oil from the Middle East? Why are we continuing to send dollars to the Middle East where you've got, look at what happened in Paris today with an attack by extremists, by Islamic extremists. One of the ways that we fight back, one of the ways we push back is we take control of our own energy destiny. And we can do it. We are doing it. Why are gas prices lower today at the pump? Is it because OPEC decided to give us a Christmas present? I don't think so. It's because we're producing far more energy than we ever have before. But to continue to produce that energy, we've got to have the infrastructure to move that energy from where it's produced to where it's consumed. That means pipelines, that means roads, that means rail. For electricity, that means transmission. But we can't have an energy plan for this country that really works without the infrastructure to move that energy safely and effectively. That's what this project is all about. So why are we here talking about it today? It seems like a pretty straightforward proposition. After all, I think there's something like 19 different pipelines that cross the border. In fact, there are millions of miles of pipelines in this country. Here's a map of just some of them. We have millions of miles of pipeline in this country. A lot of them you see crossing the border. So why are we standing here today talking about another pipeline project? Because for the past six years, for the past six years, the administration has held this project up. They keep saying there's a process. Matter of fact, Josh Ernst just yesterday said, oh, well, we've got a process. Congress shouldn't intervene in the Keystone XL pipeline approval issue because there's a process. Really, Mr. President, there's a process? Let's see, the TransCanada company filed application to build the Keystone XL pipeline in September of 2008. September of 2008. Now, if you do the math, that's more than six years ago. More than six years ago. And there's a process somehow to get to a conclusion? So that company, which has invested hundreds of millions already, wants to build an 8.3, or uh, ultimately $8.9 million dollar project that will move 830,000 barrels of oil a day. And here they are six years later, still waiting for approval. And that's why today we are asking Congress to step forward and do what the American people want. 
Keystone is not a new issue. The American people understand this issue. Poll after poll shows the American people, by a margin of about 70 percent to 20-some percent, support this project. Who do we work for, Mr. President? Who do we work for? We work for the people of this great country. And 70 percent of the people of this great country say, approve the project. After six long years where all of the requirements have been met, approve the project. But the President, of course, continues to hold it up and, and even yesterday issued a veto threat. Why? Why is he wanting to threaten a project, to threaten veto on a project that 70 percent of the American people support? Well, it's really hard to understand, isn't it? Because every time an objection comes up, we've worked to address that objection. When there was objection on the route, the company rerouted. So the president says, well, it's an environmental concern. He says, well, it's an environmental concern. Really? An environmental concern. This is what his own study found. After six years of study, the State Department, in multiple environmental impact statements, three draft statements and two final environmental impact statements, this is what they found. No significant environmental impact. According to the U.S. State Department environmental impact statements. That's not something I did. That's not something the company did. That's something that the Obama administration did. Repeatedly. And came to the same conclusion. No significant environmental impact. In fact, if you don't build the pipeline, you have to move that oil with 1,400 rail cars a day. Now, Canada is going to produce the energy. North Dakota, Montana, other states are going to continue to produce the energy. So that energy is going to move. The question is, how and where? If we can't build the pipeline, then it's got to go by rail car. So do we really want 1,400 rail cars a day moving that product around, or do we want it to move more safely, more cost effectively, with better environmental stewardship through a pipeline? Common sense. And then this idea that somehow, well, Canada's not going to produce that oil if they don't have a pipeline, wrong. Wrong. They'll move it like, they'll move it by rail, and they'll build other pipelines. Here are several that are already in the planning stages. They'll move it to the East Coast for refineries they have there, or they'll send it west, and it'll go to China. Now, does that make sense? Well, it doesn't make sense to the American public, which is why the American public wants to work with Canada, as well as produce energy in our country, to become energy secure. The idea that we would say no to our closest friend and ally, Canada, we're not going to work with you. We're going to continue to buy oil from the Middle East, and we're going to have you send your oil to China it makes no sense to the American people. And it shouldn't. It shouldn't. That's why they overwhelmingly support this project. So that here we are. We're starting the new Congress. I think very clearly in the last election, the people said, we support this project, and you saw it time after time with candidate after candidate who supported this project that won their elections. But on an even bigger issue, an even bigger message, the people of this great country said, we want the Congress to work together in a bipartisan way to get things done. We want the Congress to work together in a bipartisan way to get things done. So here we have legislation that has passed the House repeatedly with bipartisan majority. Here we have legislation that has bipartisan support in this body. Here we have legislation that the American people overwhelmingly support after clearly giving the message in the last election that they want us working together to get work done, and the president issues a veto message right 
Out of the gates? Why? For whom? Who's he working for? So it is incumbent upon us to work together in a bipartisan way to get this legislation passed. And the way we're approaching it, and I see that my good friend and colleague from the great state of West Virginia is here. I want to thank and turn to him. But I want to do it in the form of a question. It was my very clear sense from the last election, and I think the very clear sense that we all got from the last election is that they want to see Congress working together in a bipartisan way in an open process to get the important work of this country done. So with this legislation, it's not just that it's about important energy infrastructure, it's also that we want to return to regular order in this body, offer an open amendment process, allow people to bring forward their amendments, offer those amendments, debate them, and get a vote on those amendments, and if they have amendments that can add and improve this legislation, great, great. And let's have that process, let's have that debate, let's have those votes, let's make this bill as good as we can possibly make it. And then the president needs to work with us. The president needs to meet us halfway and get this done for the American people.